this is. Look at how social media controls us. Look at what's going on. So what I talked about in the last video about how they put in, you know, things in, you know, Facebook and Instagram and, and using these algorithms, same thing with uh, YouTube. You know, when you search a video, you get recommend uh, recommendations for other videos based upon what you've been watching. But they understand what people are into and they can use it, not just to, you know, push sales and to get the product to a person who might be looking for it. But as I pointed out, they can use it in other ways as well. So we have to, at some point, if it's not me, somebody, somebody that's real, that's genuine, that's going to try to help black people like myself and, and others needs to do something to to put something in place before it's too late. That's going to benefit black people as far as this Internet system. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm trying to do. And it's something that, you know, I hope I, you know, can complete eventually. And, um, you know, so the whole point, as I said before, of the goal for me was to help speed things up and to, uh, you know, help get things, you know, to a certain point of completion where, you know, testing can be done. And I can really try to work out this system and any problems that I might, you know, foresee and the legal issues that I'm going to have, which is going to be the major part about this, you know, the system It's going to be because there's a lot of legal things I need surrounded by, you know, and this country and in America to get this thing to work to where it can't be um, really uh, messed with. And right now, because the way the internet is set up to where, you know, it's, it's free, it's public, you know, these legal things are possible. They can't be hindered. Nobody can mess with them at this specific time because, you know, they haven't done anything yet to change it, but they're working on it. They're trying to get control of the internet so much to regulate it even more. So again, when you sign yourself up for these social media sites that's put here for a reason, these people are smart. They understand what they're doing. It's put out there for a reason to attract everybody in it, to make it so popular that everybody comes to it. So when an alternative comes up, nobody's even thinking about it. We see what happened in MySpace. And don't get me wrong, you still got millions of people on MySpace, but it ain't like Facebook. You see what happens. A lot of people jumped on that Facebook bandwagon and now they're looking at MySpace as a joke. And, you know, it's always about the new thing. And, and Facebook is designed to keep giving us the new thing. But it's not for us. And we got to understand that it's against us and it's a part of this whole system. Now, so many people talk about, you know, practicing group economics. And a lot of people don't even understand what group economics is and where to go to participate. And that's, you know, my point. We don't have a social media site. We don't have somewhere to go where people can find out more about these group economic, uh, you know, opportunities and how to participate and how it's going to benefit them. So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to bring that to people, because you can be on social media and um, you can have, you know, 40, 50 people from your community on social media as well. And you guys are not even friends. And you don't even really know each other, but you have the same concerns about the community and trying to, you know, fix the community. So if it's something in place to bring you guys together, one, and to get you guys to understand the type of resources available for you and your community and what you can do to get these resources and how to allocate it to you and your family and the community to bring it out of the situation that it's in, then this is something that we need. This is something that we got to have. And this is something that has to be controlled by the people. And whereas it's not going to be something where we got to go to, you know, the system or the white man to get done. It's something that we can do ourselves and have it back up with the legal protection that's going to benefit us to where no matter what we do, there's no more we can lose as long as we put money into the situation and helping the situation. We live in communities, black communities, where the, we don't even really own the homes. The homes aren't even really owned by black people in a lot of cases. So that's one of the things we got to do. One, we got to get the space. We got to get the properties. We got to own the land and own the resources in there. We got to kick these people out of the community. It's not bringing money back into the community. It's the, pl the blueprint is out there. The plan is already in place. We just got to implement it and make it work. So this is the problem with the churches in the black community. You have so many churches in the black community where you have the church who has access to the people physically. Forget social media, forget going online. These preachers and pastors and deacons and reverends or what have you have access to the people themselves where they can come into the church and they can see them physically and actually engage in conversation with them about the community. 
but it's not being done. In a lot of cases, you have some of these churches that's lucky enough to have in its congregation doctors, lawyers, businessmen, accountants, nurses, and what have you, people who understand, who are a vital part of civilization, big part. But you have this preacher in there giving them delusional stories, talking to them about, you know, this fictional character that's supposed to make everything better. Meanwhile, outside of the church, nothing is getting better and has been that way since you've been a kid, decade after decade. Nothing is, is getting fixed. The only thing that the church does for the community is once in a while, you know, give out canned goods, boxes of food, old food that don't nobody really want to eat. But, you know, homeless people who are super starving, canned food drive or what have you. And you have this church, this preacher tell you a bunch of bullshit lies about this fake Jesus who ain't never help us. That's all we get. They tell you don't go gamble. Gambling is wrong. But they have church bingo and they have uh, church uh, lotteries and church raffles or what have you. It's crazy. But the church is where we can find the leaders. Talk about a lack of leadership in the black community. It's right there in the church. Right there. But they're so caught up with this religion and they don't really understand, one, that the religion is there to keep the black community the way that it is. Because while everybody's talking about all the problems and this and that, they get up and go in the church and on Sunday and read a book that says in Matthew, ask and you shall receive. Anything you ask for in prayer shall be given to you. And all their problems are still there when they leave that church and they come back on Sunday with the same problems or even worse problems. Everybody's praying to this fictional sky daddy to fix things and it's not getting fixed, but they still come back to the church. The community don't get fixed. And you have this person in a position to do things to fix the community, but he doesn't speak about economics. He speaks about the church, the church. He has that 501c3 from the government, tax exempt status, so he can preach about the church, about a book, that has never helped us about a God that's not helping us. And this is the problem. But the church having access to the people and having the people's ear and not just that, uniting black people. This is one of the instances where you see black people actually come together and act civilized, you know, besides the stupid ass Holy Ghost shit they be doing. But you have a place where people can come together in peace and really talk and engage in conversation and try to get things fixed. But if you have people thinking that faith, you know, in action, is actually going to do something to fix their community. I mean, it's crazy. It's delusional. And as I said, mindset is a mindset that has to be changed to get people to understand reality. The only way it's going to change is if we change it. Perfect place to begin to rebuild the black community and to change things. But we can't use it for, you know, what it should be used for. We can't use it to really, truly benefit us as a community. So, you know, this is a problem. And this is one of the reasons why we have to really get on the ball and, and really start moving and doing things outside of these systems. Because you have the church that has so much power that's in place. So not only do you got to compete with the system itself, you have to compete with the mindset of these religious people and these churches. That's big on the corner that everybody go to, that everybody is influenced by. We gotta compete with that as well. And the the crazy thing about it is the mindset of people, because again, these people go to church and they get up early and they get dressed and they really base their schedule off of church and the service. But then they don't fucking live by what the Bible says is right before God or what their church says is right before God. They don't. They go in there and fraud and act like they somebody who they not. And when they get outside the church, you know, it's back to the real world. And it's back to pretending and hoping and, you know, praying and wishing and nothing gets done. It's a waste of time. But it's something that we got to look at that model and say we need places like this. Every community should have a community center. Plain and simple. Forget the church. The church ain't going to do nothing. As long as these people have this mindset of religion, it's just it's going to be the way that it is. But that's not to say that for the sake of you know economics and for making the community better, that we can't go and try to talk to these preachers and get them to do things 
economically to change things to do little different things that's not going to really you know you know and you know inflict on people's religion but help build a community but then again it goes back to that 501c3 that says that the state basically owns that church and if you start doing something like that the state can stop it and that's something to think about as well but the model was still there as far as having a community center to get people together to to understand how to do this and it's something that we need to do on our own as to how you separate me personally my stance on all this stuff as i talked about before seeing all this stuff that's going on in the marching and protesting get away from it let these racist people go out there and march and say whatever they want to say and protest don't don't deal with it just let it go the only people we should see on the news protest you should have a kkk on one side and nobody else but the news media. You shouldn't have people out there screaming back at the KKK. They look stupid. And you look stupid screaming at them. What you there for? What like Your presence is not going to get them to change hundreds of years of ideology about black people. They're not going to all of a sudden change. All you're going to do, you're there to get into an argument. It's not going to help the situation. They're going to flip it to make you look stupid. It's not worth it. You should have people there screaming. That's it. The KKK. Nobody else. But then you got to understand, you know, people got situations. People got problems. People need to feed their family so they can pay black people to go ahead and argue. I'm going to pay you money and pay, you know, for you to go up there and argue with these KKK dudes. This is the problem. And as long as we can be bought, our situation will never change. As long as they can buy us and as long as they can buy us to a point where we don't have a situation to rectify that, to, to fix if somebody is bought. We're going to continue to lose. We don't have nothing to combat that. What do we have? You have people who are not going to come out and expose these people as being bought off. We don't have a situation to combat that. So, you know, as I said, this is this is a, an uphill battle and we're so far behind. Like y'all don't really understand the body of work it's going to take to fix this situation. And we haven't even begun yet. You know, so I, I do a lot of meditation. You know, I spend a lot of time really trying to relax and calm down and, you know, be somewhere soothing because, you know, I look at things differently and I understand, you know, the difficult tasks we have ahead and I can, I can kind of see what's coming and what they're trying to do. And to me, it's like, yo, we need to wake up fast. So, you know, I, it's, it's tough for me. I can't, I can't be on social media and go up and down the timeline and see the shit that I'm seeing. You know, it's like a train is coming and, you know, people on the tracks dancing. They don't like they act like they don't see the damn train. People on the tracks worried about what Nicki Minaj is doing or what some celebrity is doing and what's coming on TV. You know, when the next episode of Power or Game of Thrones or some shit is coming on, you know, and this train is barreling down on us. So I can't get with that. I can't get with it. I just can't because I'm looking at this stuff and I'm like, well, it's, it's what? What is this? Like... Do, do people not understand what's going on? It's crazy. And this is why I say a mindset. It's crazy how, you know, you can turn on the TV and see innocent black person killed in the street, you know, uh, KKK, you know, rallies and protests of white supremacy or what have you. And people just ignore all that to go, you know, look at some music videos to talk about, you know, hip hop and music just talking about killing each other and, you know, destroying the black community. What is that? That is a mindset. That is a mindset. And this is what we have and what we stuck with and what we got to deal with. And it's frustrating to anybody who can see what's going on and what they're doing. I mean, these people is showing you that they don't give a shit, that this is what they think of you. You're, you are nothing. We could just kill you on TV and it's nothing you can do about it. I don't care how much you march. We're going to keep killing you. You are worthless. You are nothing. And Y'all want to go dance to some music. Y'all want to go dance about this and talk about that and watch this and promote promote that. It's fucking frustrating when you see it. You know, it's frustrating. And, you know, everybody not as lucky as me. Everybody's not as, you know, I don't like to say blessed, you know, as, as me. But, you know, I have the opportunity to, to, go, to get up and go. You know, I can just leave. I can live anywhere I want to live in, in the world. It doesn't matter. Everybody can't do that. But I have to be able to do it because I can't sit in one place too long and, and deal, you know, I have to unfortunately deal with America right now, but I'm almost can finish the process of being completely done with America 
except for as, you know, business wise. That's it. As far as a citizen, it's almost done and over with for me. So, you know, my process will be done, you know, hopefully by the end of this year or by next year to where I'm no longer an American citizen. So that's already in the works. But, you know, I can't, I can't do it. I just can't, I can't get with it. So, no, I haven't seen Power. I haven't seen one episode of Power. I haven't seen one episode of any of these stupid shows that a lot of people watch. I can't bang with this hip hop stuff. I can't really get with it. But, you know, it's frustrating to see it and to see that this is what people are worried about at a time like this. Did, did, did you not see what's on the news? Do you not see that these people are telling you at every moment that you turn, this is what they can do to you. It's nothing you can do. We don't care about you. And to have people actually protest against you for saying, don't kill me. I mean, that shit don't make you want to don't make you want to get your shit together. I mean, what will? So, again, when I say a mindset, if we don't change our mindset, it's, nothing is going to happen for us. Nothing is going to be fixed. Because if you've got that kind of mindset, I mean, they already won. So, yeah, what I think, you know, black people should do is just fall back. You know, fall back and change. You know, really start thinking about what you consider priority and what you really hold, you know, true, true to. You know, what, what you really think is important. You know, what is it? You know, what is it? Is it just, you know, working and, you know, trying to make some money and, feed your family do you have a dream or a goal you're trying to you know aspire to like what is it that you want and think about what is it really you know what is that really going to do for you and do for you know black people and again and that's the problem <laughs> because you know when you have your goals and dreams it's about me and as i always say before you know we've been conditioned you know, to feel like, you know, shitting on other black people is just cool. I got this. You don't have that. I got this and you don't. I don't want what everybody else got. I don't want people to have what I have. You know, we've been conditioned to have this kind of mindset, even though we really don't got shit. And people just want what um, what they know other people can't afford or can't get or what have you. It's just like a cool thing that, you know, we have this mindset and it's stupid. It's retarded. And. As long as we had this mindset of me, 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 you know, it's just stuff is not going to work. So, again, that's a mindset. That's something that's put in place for us to feel this way. And it's something that completely goes against a community, what a community stands for. So if you're trying to shit on your next door neighbor or the person who around the corner from you or what have you, you're trying to be better than them or be balling or what have you. And, you know, people compete with their own brothers and sisters and friends or what have you for, for material possessions. And it's like. Why wouldn't you want somebody who you say you love to, to be doing better than you? And this is the mindset. If you want a person, if you have friends in your circle who don't want to see you doing better than them, they need to get out your circle. Because I want everybody in my life who I love and who I associate with to be doing better than me. Plain and simple. Of course I do. Why wouldn't you want that? To have more money, to be more successful. That's good. It gives you something to to work towards, you know, to work harder for. And if you have a circle like that, then you're going to be better yourself, especially if these people actually love you. That means you can never fall. You're good. You're surrounded by people that can that got more to you, that can lift you up with no problem. And some people surround themselves with less, you know. You know it's, it's just a crazy mindset to have. And we don't, we're not realizing that that's our mindset. Because, you know, it's all about being cool and cool has basically destroyed the black community and it's all about following the trends and, and it's it's just crazy when you turn on on a, on the news and you see what you see. It's tough. It's tough. Especially going to places and being in countries where you see black people, Africans, and it's different. You know, you see them act different. You know, here in Sweden you see how the Africans here, how they stick together here at one, but at the same time they mingle, but, you know, they have a, a different sense about them. It's just different. It's just different. And anybody who's been around Africans see that they're about their business. They like to have fun and all this and that, but Africans don't be playing. They're about their business. They, like, it's no joke. And success is, you know, their goal. And they help each other. It is crazy. It ain't crazy. It's a good thing. But how they, how they stick together here is unbelievable. That's why I said you can't walk up and down the street here, walk past a black person, one of these Africans, they're going to speak to you. They're going to say hi. They're going to say what's up. 
And then it's like, you know, you know, how we how we are in the black community, you know where the Chinese store is. You know where the poppy's at. That's how it is here. You know, you got African stores everywhere. Hair products, clothes, or what have you, merchandise, they everywhere. And it's like, boom, this is the African store. Everybody's in there. So we gotta we gotta we gotta fix the situation. And again, that's due to a system that is not trying to oppress African people. You know, which are the minority here, but it's don't get me wrong, there's a lot of them here. So a whole bunch of them. So, you know, when you see it working somewhere else and it's like, damn, these people listen to hip hop. They listen more Afro beats than hip hop, but they still listen to it. It's not really affecting them as much because they're about their business. They understand what it is and they have an alternative to hip hop, which is, you know, Afro beats. And they have, you know, a lot of people listen to um, completely different music in Europe. And don't get me wrong, a lot of people like the American artists, but not as much as you would think. You know, it's not as crazy as it is in America. So the mindset is not this completely different mindset. So, you know, we got to we got to look at what we have and what's given to us in the black community and, and figure out is it something that we need. You know, and again, it's so easy to say this stuff. We talk all the damn time, nothing never happens. Same shit over and over. People hear good ideas and they hear things that sounds absolutely perfect. And, you know, we just move on. This is not going to reach every single black person. Everybody's not going to hear this uh, this message. And um, it's not really going to resonate with people because somebody is going to look at it and want to poke holes in the whole thing and see flaws and not really add to something that's going to uh you know help us they're just, just going to you know criticize but the mindset is there and we got to change it in order for us to have real change because they showing us that they're not going to stop as i said before it's not going to stop it's just not and the only way we can do it is if we just stop following what they're doing and focus on us and start doing things that go against this system and understand one you know we protesting and marching to the same people who are responsible for what we protesting and marching for. So we dealing with this system. We need to get alternatives, plain and simple. So if it's not black businesses that's springing up to get black people away from these jobs where they're working for the same people who don't give a shit about them, for the same people who are pressing them, if black people don't get these companies and corporations to spring up to where we can take black people away from these corporations who don't help us, and bring them to these black corporations that's about helping the black community, it's, it's not going to change. You're preaching to the choir. Nothing is going to change. You, you're preaching and preaching and complaining and marching, and then you're going back to the same people responsible for what you, you know, protested for. You know, and it's crazy. It's a stupid cycle that we're involved in. It's crazy. It's like working against, you know, your best interests. It's like working against, you know, your hopes and dreams. You know, doing this and it's it's stupid. It's really stupid, and we really gotta get the resources we need to change it. Because if we don't change the system, and you know, stop participating in this system, nothing is ever going to change. If you don't see that yet, I mean, you gotta look forward and look ahead and see the facts. They're not going to stop unless we do something to make it stop. Unless we make it stop on our own. Plain and simple, it's never going to stop. We protest, march, whatever, whatever. It ain't going to change. These celebrities are bought off. They paid off to not do nothing. They're not going to help you. Stop looking to these celebrities to do shit and saying what they doing to help other situations is cool. Oh, that's what's up that he did that. That's what's up that they doing that. It's bullshit. What they do for the black community. What they do for you. Plain and simple. And the money that they're giving is not going to go to black people. It's not going to go to something that's going to really benefit. They should take their money, put it together, and go find these black people in Houston and make sure they get this money. To make sure they got insurance. Because a lot of them don't got insurance. And a lot of them are going to be homeless and are homeless right now. So, you know, this this is a situation that we got to look at and learn from. If we didn't learn from Katrina, because obviously we didn't. Same situation is going on. Same type of mindset is still here. And, you know, we, we, we got to learn from, from it or, you know, that's it, you know. So I wanted to make this video to kind of piggyback off the last video I talked about, you know, and, you know, get people to really understand what's going on and just, you know, be real about the situation. It's not going to stop unless we stop it. And it, right now, looking at the situation, it seems impossible. 
but it's little things that we can do personally as individuals to help fix, you know, help rectify the situation. So, so hopefully people, you know, understand and be influenced by uh, people who are really trying to make a change and, you know, help out and join in. So, but well, I thank you guys for taking the time to watch. Thanks to everybody who, um, the 37 people, it's probably like 40 something now, and I think, who actually did support, you know, uh, in America and everybody else around the world who supported and uh, bought the videos or what have you, the downloads, the DVDs, and um, I appreciate the support. Appreciate everybody, uh, the messages and emails, a lot of them I gotta respond to, you know, I got you guys, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys next video. As I said before, to people who stick around to the end of the video, I know they be long sometimes, but I said before, I was gonna disappear for a while, you know, now I'm back. A lot of people was asking when the next, next video gonna be, and where you been, but I said in a couple videos, DVDs as well, that you know, I was gonna disappear for a while, but it wasn't that long, but um, yeah. Thanks for the support. See you guys next video. Thanks for watching.